And moving on to Uganda. See, I'm still trying to digest why government officials in different parts of Africa feel like they can do whatever they want on the road and get away with it. As a matter of fact, it's as if some of them think they are the only ones that own the road whenever they are passing by. I didn't know that Ugandans face the same thing we face in Nigeria until I saw this picture. I mean, just look at that. Apparently, the convoy of the vice president was speeding by and then they said that this man tried to overtake the vice president. I mean, first of all, I don't think that anybody in their right sense would try to overtake an African official when they see them speeding by. I don't know, but whatever. So the security police in the vice president's convoy came down. They stopped this man. They gave him the beating of his life before arresting him. I don't know when it's not a crime for somebody else to be on the same road as the vice president or any official for that matter. Is it in the Ugandan constitution that you cannot pass a government official? I mean, somebody tell me. <laughs> so the funny thing is, the policemen did not realize that the man they were beating is actually King Kamuswaga of Koki. That is his royal highness, Apollo Sansa Kabumbuli II. And a friend of the vice president. So see, this is the picture of the king with the vice president, by the way, during an event. It was after they took him to the police station that they realized who he was. My guess is maybe he recognized the vice president's convoy and he was trying to say hi, you know? I don't know. All I know is they beat up the man before they knew who he was. So when they found out who he was, policemen apologized, they released a statement. Although in their apology, they also said that, well, the king should actually be the one to be blamed for his arrest and people were like why they said well because number one he was driving himself that means if he had a driver they would have seen him as well he could be an important person and not treat him like they did so god help the rest of us that don't have drivers in other well especially if you are living in new york and you are taking the train <laughs> second of all they said that he was dressed casually i'm like really so that means if you dress like a big man you are less likely to be treated like this <laughs> so god help the rest of us that like dressing casual or if you have a small stature god help you. Number three, the policeman said that, well, there was no flag on his car or any official emblem. I'm like, kai, 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 you know? When it's just being a human being not enough to warrant decent treatment, eh? Why must we have a driver, fancy car, a flag, or a big man's outfit before we can command respect in our own countries? Why not? So the people of Koki, where the king is from, they declared 10 days of money. They were so upset for how their king was manhandled. I'm telling you, this was a serious issue. <laughs> but the one thing that pained me in all of this is hearing that after the whole thing, they flew the king to Germany for treatment. I said, really? Like, really Africans? Why not? <laughs> they said, well, he recently had stroke not long ago before they beat him up and now they beat him up. So the next thing was to fly him to Germany to make sure that he's perfectly fine. So he was there until he fully recovered. And then when he came back, they had a Thanksgiving ceremony for him, you know, to welcome him back. You know why I'm really upset about this? Because this is not an isolated case. What happens to common people when they are beaten up by police and they cannot afford to go to Germany? And now that this happened to the king, do you think that he will see to it that a good hospital of international standard is built for his people in case this happens to them? I don't think so. Because everybody knows that when government officials are passing on the road in different parts of Africa, not just Uganda. All drivers must clear the road as if God is the one coming. And sometimes the road is narrow. So these people have nowhere to park. And these uh, government officials will be speeding. And they don't want to slow down or stop for civilians. Because of that, so many accidents have happened. For example, in February of this year, the NRM Secretary General Lumumba's convoy was in an accident. Not only that, in January, former Prime Minister Amama Mbabazi's convoy was also in another accident. I've heard that he has been in several accidents before between November and now. And the accident happened because of speeding in which two people were critically injured and another person suffered fractured foot. Now those people were not flown to Germany for treatment. <laughs> they were taken to Mbarara Hospital. Just imagine that. And in 2005, the then vice president's convoy was also in another accident that was very critical. Two people were injured and uh, the police said that, oh, the driver of a Toyota Corolla was the one that failed to give way. Maybe there was nowhere for him to go. So they had head-on collision. If the driver doesn't give way, why can't they give way? I don't understand. What if there was nowhere for the driver to park? Again, despite how serious their injuries were, those people were taken to Lira Hospital. They didn't fly them to Germany. So the vice president and his escorts at that time, they escaped. They were not hurt in any way. US ambassador to the UN went to Cameroon and they were speeding and they hit a boy and the boy died. So I don't understand. Even if your drivers that are from Cameroon are speeding, can't you say something that, I beg, slow down. All I'm trying to say is that just like in Nigeria, Uganda 
Ugandan officials need to stop this madness of owning the road whenever they are passing and harassing other drivers. Ugandans need hospitals of international standard where everybody can be treated, not just the kings. Sure, you understand? But again, you guys know I don't know much. Guess what? I'm just keeping it real.